you know, most of you know that, you know, I come from a background. I had addictions and I was an impulsive person. Okay. I just had the thought and do it. And, and, and then I became a Christian and, and I got Jesus in my life. And, and, and this lady who led me to Jesus, she told me that God was going to set me free. And I believed her. She said that God was going to rebuild my life. Take all that brokenness and, and rebuild my life. And guess what? I believed her. And it didn't mean everything just happened in that one moment. But something did change in that moment. There was a change on the inside that I knew. I knew if I hung in. I knew if I didn't throw in the towel. I knew God was going to do something good in me. Did I ever get tempted to, to use again? You better believe it. Self-control. I had to learn how to run to God and not a cigarette and not a bottle and not drugs. I had to learn how to run to God. And I, and basically whenever I feel the, the pull, the pull, ha, run to God. Oh God, help me. Oh God, help me. I mean, if someone was around, it probably looked like a nut, but it doesn't matter. It set me free. I had to run to God. God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. God, I need you. This is the self-control that God offers us. He gives us the ability to in, in, be in control of those impulses that try to hit us. Philippians 2, 12 to 16 says, So then, my dearest friends, as you have always followed my advice, and that not only when I was present to give it, so now when I'm far away, be keener than ever to work out your salvation that God has given you with a proper sense of on responsibility. Next verse. For it is God who as is at work within you. Come on, touch the person beside you. Look them in the eyes and say, God is at work within you. 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 It is God who is at work within you. Giving you the will and the power. Giving you willpower. The self-control. The ability to, to walk away. Sometimes I had not walk, run. Run. <laughs> I, I, I can't just walk, man. The temptation is there. The pull is there to go back to my old life. I can't just dawdle away. I got to get my running shoes on, and I got to run in the opposite direction. Why? Because of my freedom. Laying hold of freedom, it says, working with it, giving you the will and the power to achieve his purpose. Goes on to say, do everything without grumbling or arguing. So that you may be God's children, blameless, sincere, wholesome. Live, you're living in this warped and diseased world. But be shining there like lights in a dark place. For you hold in your hands the very word of life. Now I recognize not everybody brought their Bible today. But you could imagine that you had brought your Bible with you today. Maybe your Bible's on your phone. And if you don't have a Bible, do not leave this place without a Bible today. We want to give you a Bible. But it says you hold the word of life in your hands. The Bible's not a monument to put on a bookshelf. It's not, it's not a, you know, it's something to hold into your hands. It's something that you touch, that you, that, you, that you read, that you open up. It's a life source for you. The Bible says it's food. You need the food of the word of God to live in freedom, to live in self-control. We need it in our life. And so self-control is, is a lot about surrendering to the one who made you, surrendering to his control. Saying, God, I can't do it on my own. How many have realized, I can't do it on my own? You can try to get free of an addiction by yourself. You're going to fail. I told someone once, it's easy to quit smoking. I quit a hundred times. It's hard to stay quit. You can quit, but oh, you're going to pick that thing up again. The first time there's a problem, the first time there's anxiety, the first time you're faced with a difficulty, that was my go-to. And I don't know what your go-to is, but I am saying that God is rebuilding. He's doing something fresh. He's setting people free. But your source of nourishment is the word of God. We cannot do it on our own. We need the one who made us, the one who knows us, the one who formed us. And the one who looks at us today and says, I love you, and I find no fault in you. You say, oh, there's a lot of faults in me. Do you know when God looks at you today? He sees you through the blood of Jesus. Through the blood of Jesus. And because of the blood of Jesus, he sees no fault in you. You see a fault in yourself. But the blood of Jesus makes it where God looks at you and says, I see no fault in you. I see no fault in you. I see no fault in you. Is it a miracle? You better believe it. I see no fault in you. I see no fault in you. I see no fault in you. You're like, 
There's a lot of faults. God's like, I see no fault in you. Why? Because the blood of Jesus has made a way. That's why we cannot ever take any credit for it. We can't say, I'm so good. I got myself free. I'm so good. I set myself up. I'm so good. No, 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 no. No credit to us. All credit to him. It's the blood of Jesus that sets us free. And I want to close with this scripture today in Romans 6, 12 to 14. It says, do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. You're like, woo, that sounds a little difficult. Okay. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, here we go. Here's the exchange. Instead, give yourself completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. The moment you opened up your heart and said, Jesus, I need you as my leader. I cannot do it without you. I don't want to do it without you. I need you as my leader. It says he's given you new life. The Bible says you've been born again. You don't go back into your mother's womb. Every mother would be like, thank God. (laughs) Okay, that's not happening. Do not try to shove a full, full, full mature man, woman back in there. No, thank you. No, thank you. You're big enough the first time I pushed you out. Okay. But no, no, no. Born again. It says in the spirit. When you say, God, I need you, Jesus, be the leader of my, it says you're born again, you have new life. It means there's a crossover. Everything from before is before. Everything now is new and it's fresh and it's underneath the blood of Jesus. So it says, give yourself completely to God. For you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what's right for the glory of God. Sin no longer is your master. For you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. It's, it's the window. The self-control in, a, in, a, in our actions. We need the grace of God. We will not do it by ourselves. We'll go right back to the thing we've always done. We need the grace of God. Grace means the power to succeed. The empowerment to live in victory. We've got to learn how to draw on the grace of God. You feel like, I I want to do something, and I already know it's wrong. I want to make a decision, and I already know it's a bad decision. What are you going to do in the moment when you feel the pull, when you feel the tug to go back to the bottle, when you feel the pull to make a bad decision? What are you going to do? you got to draw on the grace of God. You're like, "I I can't draw on the grace of God. If you can drink, you can draw. If you can smoke, you can draw. If you can vape, you can draw. If you can cuss, you can draw. Come on, you can draw on the grace of God. You're like, well, I can pick up a bottle pretty easy. Then you know how to draw. Instead of drawing from the wrong river, you begin to draw from the right river. Don't go there. Go to God and say, God, right now, I take a drink of your grace. I take a drink of your grace. When I was first getting set free of smoking, I used to smoke and pray. That's what I did. I'd go outside and, God, I need you. Oh, God, I need you so bad. Oh, God, I need you so bad. I just kept smoking and praying and smoking and praying. And you think, oh, that sounds crazy. It worked. I just kept, I didn't know how to let go of one without the other. So I just was doing them both at the same time. It was a bit of a process for me, so don't judge me, okay? But I was smoking and praying, smoking and praying. And one day when I'm smoking and praying, God spoke to me and said, Do you want the future I have for you? I said, yes, Lord. He said, you can't have it with a cigarette in your hand. Let it go. And I let it go. That was the last time I ever smoked. Now, I had battled for a long time. But in that moment, I drew on grace. He said, let it go. I was like, oh, God. Okay. And I broke him. I was like, okay. I let it go. And I drew on grace. What did I have to do the next morning when I woke up? Draw on grace. What I have to do the next time I was in conflict with somebody? Draw on grace. What I have to do the next time I had, had a problem? Draw on grace. I had to be, oh, God, I need it. I, need it. I want a cigarette so bad. God, I draw on your grace. I draw on your grace. I draw on your grace. And you know what? Every time I drew on his grace, it was there. The bottle that never goes empty is the river of God, the grace of God. Come on. Why don't we draw on his grace today?
I don't know what you're facing, but I think most of us are like the rest of us. There's something going on. There's something going on. We need the grace. Come on, close your eyes, Dave. We're going to draw on the grace of God together. I want you to lift your hands. If you know I need to draw on the grace, we're going to welcome the grace of God. Father, today, I thank you that your grace is sufficient for every single man, every single woman in this facility today. I thank you that your grace is here. And God, we draw right now. We draw on your grace. We cannot do it alone. We cannot do it alone. We don't want to do it alone. We draw today on your ability, your power, your love, your grace. Your self-control, Holy Spirit, visit your people with grace. I want you to pray this prayer out loud with me, nice and loud, nice and bold today. I want you to repeat these words after me and say, Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me personally. Thank you for forgiving all of my mistakes. Today, I choose you. As the leader of my life. And I thank you that today I draw on your grace. You fill me. You're helping me right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you today.